Would you please give Billy a warm welcome to our pulpit? Hey! Thank you, Miss Bill. Thank you, dear brother pastor. Bavaka Shalashevit, please be seated. Hallelujah. I'm down here because I wanted to be down here, and I got a reason for it. In a minute, you'll know. But um, I wanted to show, I wanted to get ready to show some of I'm just so happy. I'm just so thrilled. I just have to pinch myself. And uh, Eleni, she's got to pinch herself. And, you know, um, she was with me all the way. Mac and Lynn have been with me all the way. But Lynn, I mean, she's there on the ground with us. When uh, in 1999, the Lord told us something big is going to happen in Israel, and I want you there. So that was in January. Well, we were there in September. And uh, there was offered to us a property that was um, available for purchase. And in Israel at that time, 95% of the properties were owned by the state or like the Catholic Church or Orthodox and uh, then uh, 5% could be bought outright uh, because of ancient people had bought it long before well, there was a state. So some was available right on the Sea of Galilee. And uh, <laughs> Lynn and I went over there with Lucy and Keeter. We prayed. You know what really spoke to me? We were there on the grounds. We were looking at this beautiful piece of property. And um, we said, we got to pray. Now, me, I come from Oklahoma. You know, I can sit on the ground. I can sit on a hay bale. I can do anything like that. But those two little southern bells, <laughs> they can't sit on the ground. So you know what Lucy said? Lord, send us a blanket. Lucy, Lucy, you know, her twin sister. Well, right at that time, down this little dirt road, no other car on it, in sight anywhere, comes a truck. And that truck gets out, the guy gets out, and in his arms is a, like a quilt. <laughs> and he's got olives in a bin over there. And he takes that and he puts it over the bin and he drives off. And Lucy says... Thank you, Lord, for sending us the quilt. <laughs> we spread it on the ground, and we prayed. You know, that spoke to me. If God could provide that quilt, he could provide what we need. Amen. I mean, it really spoke to me. So, anyway, long story short, other people were trying to buy it. But the people who owned it, who were Babylonian Jews, they came from Iraq in 1948, I think it was, their families. They said, I don't know, something tells us to sell it to you. Lynn and I went and signed the contract, all in Hebrew. We could not read one word. <laughs> if my lawyer saw me do that now, he, he would have a conniption fit. We just went. She signed it too, Matt. I know. <laughs> we, we signed that we would pay $1.8 million <laughs> in a certain amount of time. You know how much money we had? <laughs> oh, dear Jesus. Long story short, it came the due date. We had the point eight. But Brenda, my daughter Brenda, you got a call at the office. Brenda hand her a microphone. What happened at the call at the office? You remember? Yeah. Stand up here and just don't take too long. But <laughs> she, she, yes. Yeah, uh, uh, those ladies that you know, the, the the sisters and cousins. I don't know what they are from California. They used to go to the meetings with mom and uh -huh. uh, uh, Israel particularly. Well, their Sunday school teacher. Who, now, these are grown ladies, like 40, 50 years old. Who's their Sunday school teacher when they were 12. It was named Edith Sprague, and she's an old lady, real old lady. And uh, oh. <laughs> she wasn't as old as you, Mother. Oh, I mean, I'm... she was younger than you. Older than you. <laughs> Mom is not an old lady. You're getting in trouble here. Huh? 
So uh, anyway, she goes, our office was in a duplex. One side of the duplex. And you we were big remember time. more than I do, but all I remember was they said that they had Abbott Scott stock. She well, had, I'll tell about all okay, that. Okay, oh, okay. All I want you oh, to I'm say good. is they called you and said that they, this lady wants to give. Oh, this lady wants to give oh, okay. Okay. a million dollars. Well, I was driving to work that day with Shelly, and I said, Shelly, I just heard the Lord say he's going to give us a million dollars today. <laughs> so we got the office, and Britta said, Mom, we got a phone call from those ladies that have been going with you to Israel and their Sunday school teacher from when they were kids wants to give you a million dollars because she likes you because you were Baptist and you had blue eyes. <laughs> so we, we flew to California and she had stock. The bankers had never seen it. Her grandfather, great-grandfather, had come over not on the Mayflower but one of the ones after that with Mr. Abbott, who formed Abbott Pharmaceuticals, and these are paper stocks from ancient times. The bankers came in and looked at it. They said, we, we haven't seen anything like this ever. We just, you know, we go on the computer and wire here and wire there, and you never see anything. A million bucks. There we go with our bill, 1.8 million, and we've got it. Oh, glory to God. Well, we've since added to that, and we have three acres over there now, which is a lot of ground in Israel. But we just worked and tore down the old place that was there and tried to do and tried to do, and we couldn't get building permits, and we couldn't get this, and we... Every year, Mac, I hated to go to the board meetings. I hated to go autumn assembly and say, well, <laughs> we didn't get the building permit yet, but... They promised we're going to get it in just a few months. 20 years. But you know what people did? They kept giving money. They just act like you're going to get it. Hallelujah. Well, uh, last year, uh, our lawyer, uh, who makes sure that we're compliant, you know, here in Tulsa, really one of the top ones in the country, and uh, he goes to Harvard to take some kind of courses. And there's this man he meets from Israel. And he said, you know, I think we've got a client you could help. So he tells that man about us. And that man and his firm vet us. We don't even know they're doing it. And then they contact us. We like to take your project. Oh, they're one of the leading companies in all of Israel. They have to do with all the infrastructure of bridges and roads and everything. Their name is like the top, top, top. They were founded by the man who was the uh, uh, prosecuting attorney in the Adolf Eichmann case. And, ha! Huh. So anyway, Lenny and I went over there. Oh, me. And he said, Israel needs your project. We need this. You have a good name in Israel. And I want you to know, it's just like you took a bulldozer and walls that didn't fall. Psh, out they went from the way. And so we have some pictures. I think we have a little video. Uh, if you'll just show it, there's some pictures. The building now. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Look at that. It's coming up out of the ground, Brother Mac. You see it? Yeah, change it and just, yeah. See, there we go. I mean, it's happening. Bless the Lord. Glory to God. That's not it in the background. It's ours would be in builder in the front. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. You have, yeah. You got one that shows the sea somewhere. That's the Valley of the Doves. Across, there's one kind of to the side. Over there you can see the Sea of Galilee blue, and then you see the high cliffs of Arbel, and uh, there's the Valley of the Doves. Between, that's where Jesus walked down when he came from Nazareth to Capernaum. And there's this old prophecy that says um, when the Messiah comes, he'll walk in the Valley of the Doves. And he did. And it's right there by us. You can see doves there, you know. So you got any more? Or you have a little video? Oh, there's a little construction shack, you know. Oh, isn't this exciting? Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. I, I'm just so thankful. I'm just so thankful. I, I had to pinch myself. I had to pinch, I had to pinch Lynn. <laughs> 
No, he did. He said that. He said, it's a, yeah, there you can see the sea back there. He said, it's a good thing you bought this when you did. No land like this is available now. He said, in price, it has increased four times what you paid for it. We know when we had the whole thing there. But he said, if you put it on the market, there'd be a bidding war with the top uh, hotel chains in the world trying to get this place to buy it, you know, and own the property and have all legal right to it like we do. Yeah. Dear right. God. I know. Well, uh, do you have a little video of some... Uh, I think maybe I, I wanted them to send you the video of them so putting the blessings in the ground. Hi, shalom, shalom. We are here at Big Talavel Project. I have here your blessing to put inside the foundation of our project. These are blessings. You believe we are here. They put blessings in foundations foundation when they build buildings. Uh, I wrote it in, you wrote it in, in English. So these are I my blessings. I put it in Hebrew as you asked me to put it in the scriptures. Uh, it's, uh, it's saying in Hebrew from Tehillim. In the lips of him that help understanding wisdom is found. And from uh, also another, another uh, through wisdom is house built, and by understanding it is established. And by knowledge shall the chamber be filled with procedures and pleasant riches. The Chokmah is le bayit uvetruna itonan, uvedat hadarim ibelu kol hon yakar benayim. Expect the Lord build the house, they labor in vain, that build it. The Lord is building this house, we labor not in vain. So I put it here. Inside this, I wrote this one, and I put it in the foundation of Migdal Arbel project here, inside. And we got word to some of our partners on our prayer call that they could send in blessings, and they did in time, that we do have a, a partner blessings in there too. And I just, I just want to praise the Lord. I don't even really want to preach tonight. I want to praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's just stand up. And let's just go. Brother Hagin always used to tell us, turn in your Bible to Psalm 149. He used to say, if you want to praise the Lord, have a good time praising the Lord, you just start at Psalm 145, and you just read right on to Psalm 150. And you will be praising the Lord. So that's what I want to do right now. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And of course it says praise ye the Lord. You can look up on the deal there if you don't want to mess with your. And you know praise ye the Lord. You know what that word is? Hallelujah. That's a word. Hallelujah. So let's sing it. Say it. Hallelujah. Oh, and we're going to all, we're just going to say this together. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sing unto the Lord a new song and his praise in the congregation of saints. Let Israel rejoice in him that made him. Let the children of Zion be joyful in their king. Let them praise his name in the dance. Let them sing praises unto him with timbrel and harp. For the Lord takes pleasure in his people. He will beautify the meek with salvation. Let the saints be joyful in glory. Let them sing aloud upon their beds. Let the high praises of God be in their mouth and a two-edged sword in their hand to execute vengeance upon the nations and punishments upon the people to bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron, to execute upon them the judgment written, this honor have all his saints. Praise ye the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise ye the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in the firmament of his power. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. 
Praise him with a psaltery and harp. Praise him with a timbrel and dance. Praise him with stringed instruments and organs. Praise him upon the loud cymbals. Praise him upon the high sounding cymbals. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Woo-hoo-hoo. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You up there in the balcony, are you breathing? If you're breathing, you're supposed to be praising the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise ye the Lord. 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 Hallelujah. 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 Key to. Key leolam hasdo. Hallelujah. Key to. Key leolam hasdo. That's what they said when they dedicated the temple. Hallelujah, for he is good and his chesed endures forever. And when they sang it all together and they became as one, they became as one, then the glory of the Lord filled the place. The hour is late. Don't you know, Billy Brim, the hour is late? You spilled in that project over there, the hour is late. I know it. And you know what? It's right on time. Right on time. And the Lord showed me you're going to stand in it, you're going to preach in it. But during that Shemitah cycle, that is the seven years when we're in heaven, and the seven years going down here on earth, the great tribulation, it's going to be a safe place. It's going to be a safe place for leaders of 144,000. I've been knowing that for years and years and years. I used to wouldn't tell it. I'm saying it now. Folks, he is near. He's even at the door. And it's time, like Brother Mac was talking about, hook him back up. Forsake not the assembling of yourselves together as you see the day approaching. If you can't see the day approaching, you're absolutely blind spiritually. You may be dead. But we know how to raise the dead. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. These are the glorious days. Oh, God, I'm so glad I'm here. I'm so glad. I'm so glad I get to live now, Lord. I'm so glad I'm the age I am. Know what I know. See what I can see. What an honor and a privilege it is. And so he, oh, you owe him your all. You owe him everything in your being. You're not your own. You were bought with a price. And he's building us into a holy temple in the Lord where he can manifest himself in his glory. He's going to do it right here in this church. I know this church. He knows the plans and the purpose for this church, but so do Billy Brim. (laughs) Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. If you're out there somewhere, you're just watching and you haven't been here since COVID, get yourselves back down here. Praise God. Hallelujah. We got, oh my, we're the ones. We're the generation. I know we are. He told us, you're it. I'm telling you, he told us that. Tongues and interpretation, supernatural way, you are the generation. The Antichrist is here. But we are the ones who are to restrain him. Hallelujah. 
Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Kitov. Kileolam Kasdo. Hallelujah. Kitov. Kileolam Kasdo. Hallelujah. Kitov. Kileolam Kasdo. Hallelujah. Kitov. Kilelam Kasdo. Hallelujah. Kitov. Kilelam Kasdo. Hallelujah. Kitov, Kilelam Kasdo, Hallelujah, Kitov, Kilelam Kasdo, Hallelujah, Kitov. Kilelam Kasdo, Hallelujah, Kitov, Kilelam Kasdo. And it came to pass, even as the singers and the musicians were as one, the glory of the Lord filled the house. And the priest could not stand to minister. Hallelujah. Oh, the glory. The glory of the Lord. We're called unto his glory. We're being changed from glory to glory to glory to glory. Even in this very night. In this very place in God's very sight. Working from heaven, the angels are on you. Ha, ha, ha. And a good job they will certainly do. At the direction or orchestration of the Spirit of God, they are reworking his body. And ere he comes, there shall trod upon the earth a body that's worth his coming. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Um, I'm going to share with you tonight um, what I was told to share. And um, it is Rosh Hashanah. You know that, don't you? It's the head of the civil year. Um, I want to put up, because uh, Israel... Uh, has two calendars. Well, it's not Israel's calendar. It's God's calendar. And there are two of them. And the one they've kept the longest is this one, the civil year. And it counts the time since Adam was created. And uh, so uh, this is the day that is celebrated as that, and it's the head of the civil year. Rosh, head, Hashanah, the year. Uh, now, we are told to watch for his coming by watching Israel. So how do we know uh, to watch Israel? How do we know where we are, what God's doing in our time with Israel? Well, there's a little chart that I made up, if you'll show that, number one. Uh, I made this up, but uh, I believe it's accurate. <clears throat> number one, 
uh, the choosing and calling. That's at Abraham. He chose them. He calls them. He blessed them. He brought them into their land. But with the blessing, there was also a cursing if you don't obey God. So they were scattered all over the face of the earth. But his promise was, and the big scattering came 2,000 years ago uh, when Rome destroyed their temple and carried them off uh, slaves, most of them. And a few years later, it was even against the law for a Jew to live in Jerusalem. They plowed it under. But his promise was, all that time, I'm going to bring them home. And through the mouths of the prophets, lots of prophets, uh, every prophet, in fact, but I'm just going to read one to you tonight, Isaiah 11, 11 and 12. It shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall set his hand again the second time to recover the remnant of his people, which shall be left from Assyria, Egypt, Pathros, Cush, Elam, Shinar, Hamat, and from all the islands of the sea. The first time he brought them back, Babylonian captivity. He brought them back, you know, after 70 years. Daniel wrote about it. But now he says, I'm going to bring them back again. And he shall set up an ensign, a standard, a banner for the nations. All the nations of the world are supposed to be seeing this big sign God's giving. And shall assemble the outcasts of Israel and gather together the dispersed of Judah from the four corners of the earth. Now that was his promise. And you and I are the blessed people who've seen it come to pass. Now to me, the great, one of the biggest miracles is that he preserved them for 2,000 years and they know who they were. You know how he did it? The calendar. He kept them knowing who they are through his calendar. If you would disperse Americans for 2,000 years, you wouldn't find anybody who ever remembered who America was. But for 2,000 years, they kept that calendar. And it starts with Shabbat. He gives it in Leviticus 23, six days you work, seventh day you rest. Earth, it was a gift to them. It was a gift to mankind, a day off. There had never been have a record of anybody having a day off work until God gave Shabbat. The seventh day you rest. The man, uh, Jesus said, man was not made for the Sabbath. The Sabbath was made for man. So one day in seven, they rest. And, it, and then he gave them the calendar. He gave them um, all the holy days. Um, I, I didn't uh, say that you should show this one, but I think I will show it. Um, Show uh, five, God's sacred calendar. We'll just go through it really fast. This sacred calendar was given when they came out of Egypt. They already had the civil calendar, the one we're celebrating right now. But then he gives seven feasts or seven moeds. That means appointments with God. And this is a prophetic calendar. All of the big time events on God's redemptive calendar are on, they happen on these moeds. And so the first one after they came out of Egypt was Passover. And we know that Jesus fulfilled that, Passover lamb. Then the Feast of Unleavened Bread for seven days. Leaven is a type of sin, and he dealt with sin. At the end of the week, first fruits, he was the resurrection, first resurrection from the dead. Then you count seven times seven, seven's the number of time. Seven times seven for 49 days, add one, and you have Shavuot. Weeks, it's called in Hebrew, we call it Pentecost. Then you have this time that's a, a space there. And then you go to the fall moeds, and these are yet to be fulfilled, and they will be fulfilled at his second coming, which is very nigh. We're on one of those feasts right now. We're at trumpets. They're told that they are to have a memorial of the blowing of shofars. That's the only really uh, biblical requirement for this feast. Now, it's very interesting. Uh, Shelley and I were in Sydney, Australia once for this holiday, and we were, a rabbi had us in his home and in his synagogue. They blow that 
100 times. I didn't know they did that 100 times. And I don't know what time they do what, because we got there for the morning service, and we had lunch with them, and it was already over, the 100 times blowing. But you have to get somewhere that you hear that trumpet. And if you are ill, your family will take you somewhere you can hear the trumpet. Somewhere. I understand, uh, I think Max told me that uh, by the sides of the road, somebody told me they even had loudspeakers now that, so that you can drive somebody and they can hear it. The trumpet does many things. The shofar does many things. But one thing it does is call for Messiah. And that ram's horn, remember when uh, Abraham was offering up Isaac and he said the Lord will provide himself a sacrifice and a ram was caught in the bulrushes? That's the first ram's horn. And it called for a redeemer, called for a savior. And so, hallelujah, bless the Lord. Brother Rex, are you still here? He must have gone back to Branson. Are you here? You got your, you got your ram's horn? Well, come on and blow it for us. We, want, we wanted, he drove all the way from Branson, actually. Come over here. Come over here by me, Brother Rex. Come over here. We wanted you to hear this. Got a microphone? Yeah. This is Brother Rex. He's a good man. How far do you live away from Branson? Uh, about two hours. Two hours. And he drives there for every one of our prayer meetings. Bless the Lord, brother. He, and he, I find him. I go be someplace. Here he was last night. I forgot where I was the other time. And there you were. You just show up when God tells you, don't you, brother? Oh, it's California. This is a special time. This is a special time. That's what he told me. Special time. He told him that. He said, you got to go up there to Minnesota. Yeah. He's blown on the ambers. Yeah. yeah. Bless the Lord. This came from a ram. It's a ram's horn. Hallelujah. So their lives were literally regulated during those 2,000 years by those two calendars. And they're still regulated like that by those two calendars. And so here we are uh, on this auspicious day of God's calendar. Now, we had a, the Lord told me, he said, now, what do you do on January 1st? People pray. Churches pray. They have watch night services. Really, January 1st to God means almost nothing. It's from the Gregorian calendar, which is off. If God's going to go by any calendar, he's certainly going to go by one that's on. But, uh, you know, I remember when people, 2000, year 2000, I mean, the world practically going to come to end. I said, ain't nothing going to happen. <laughs> nothing. Relax. Some lady invited me over to her house, pretty well-known lady there in Branson. And I mean, there was a, br a brood of prophets, 12 of them. They had met. And they were prophesying horrid things. I told her, just relax, calm down. Ain't nothing going to happen. And it didn't. God doesn't go by that calendar at all, but he goes by this one. Amen. Jesus came on the right time. He was a lamb at the right time. The Holy Ghost came at the right time, and he's coming again at the right time. Bless the Lord. And it'll be a moed. That's the way he operates. You just don't get to say, well, this, well, that. I saw the other day somebody said, well, now the, 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 the people and the Christians are looking for that to be the rapture. But no, no, that belongs to the Jews such and such. Are you kidding me? His, his coming has two parts. A first part where we meet him in the air, and then the second part where he puts his feet down and we're behind him. There's a seven-year span there, and they both, the book ends as Rosh Hashanah. 
Starts on Rosh Hashanah, ends on Rosh Hashanah. There is no problem. We'll share it. <laughs> but he can come another day if he wants to. That's just what I think. Anyway, I was praying about coming here. And he said, now here's what you do. I said, well, Lord, you know, people hear from you every year. They hear from you a word for the year. He said, that's right. He said, if you pray all night, any night, I'm going to give you something. I don't care if it's July the 4th. If you're seeking me, I'm going to tell you something. And so that's the way you operate, and that's the way we live. And so he gives people because they believe him for it. You get what you believe for. If you're believing for a word on January 1st, you are going to get it. Because he's just that way. But he said to me when I was coming up here, he said, Now, this is my new year. I want you to pray and seek me. And so we did. We did that last night. And the first thing he said emphasized, you are to speak my season of change. This year, there will be rapid change. This year, going to be rapid change. Change was made imminent to me in the forefront of my uh, thinking on Rosh Hash Rosh, 10 days before Rosh Hashanah. 10 days before Rosh Hashanah, I was in a place that it could come forth. I was in Brother Larry Allison's church, and it was 9 19 19. It was September. It was, we were 10 days before Rosh Hashanah, uh, the 29th that year. It was the 29th of uh, 2019. And so uh, I was going to preach that night. And uh, the Lord told me that day, he said, the crowd's going to be sparse tonight. And that's the way I want it. So we got there and Brother Allison said, there's a big music, Christian music guy in town. And everybody's going there and there won't be many there. And there weren't. The Lord said, here's what you preach on. Don't preach long. So I did. And then he started moving. And he started talking to us about change. And it came first through a song uh, with Lynn Mink. And then there came that thing down on me. And this is what it was. 2020 will be a year of transition. And when I said that, he said, these people think 2020, but I'm speaking in relation to the way I see years. He said, 2020 will be a year of transition. And it will begin with the beginning of the year as I see it on Rosh Hashanah. That year will be a year that's transition on to 2021. In 2021, all things will have begun, begun to end, begun to change, to move, to rearrange. Now this year, I must have you, I must have my body, the church, in unbroken fellowship. So prepare for it to begin the transition year in 2020. I'll provide all you need to fulfill my will. Work with me in fellowship, in prayer. For yourself, yes, but beyond yourself. You know that it will start in this transition year on Rosh Hashanah. And 2021, Rosh Hashanah is a big change. Hallelujah. Then Brother Larry Allison, the pastor, spoke. And I'm preparing to fold up this dispensation to bring it to a close, the things that I've prophesied, to bring to vision the things that have been unseen, and to bring in glory. So I started looking for transition. What does that mean? And one of the things is, uh, when a woman's going to have a baby, one of the last stages is transition stage. <coughs> now, up until that time, you can even start the final labor. It's the final, it's the final part of the final labor. And you could wake up in the nighttime. I remember when Shelly came. And I said... I think this is it. And Kent said, well, if you don't know, who knows? He got real nervous. <laughs> so at that time, you know, 
you could do a few things. You could, you know, get your little bag packed. You can maybe clean the dishes or whatever. Then there comes a time when that transition gets to a state you're not doing anything but having the baby. And that's the transition period. And the Lord said to that day on us, to us, you're going to enter the transition period in 2020. In that, in the word of God, there's a word sar, T-S-A-R. And uh, it, it's used a lot in the Old Testament. And it, ne- it means a narrow place that you're pushed into by outside pressure. And that is the word for birth pangs. Because that's how it is in a woman's birth canal. The pressure pushes in. But thank God you get a baby. We're going to get a baby. I mean, this thing is going to end up. We're going to be at an age change, and it is going to be glorious, and it is going to be wonderful. But uh, you all know, uh, at that time, we didn't know 2020 is going to come with that uh, virus. Now, God didn't send that. The devil did for sure. But it definitely put pressure on us, didn't it? Pressure not to meet for church. Pressure not to do this. Pressure not to do that. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, the Bible speaks of birth pangs. It says that these, it speaks of certain things, and it says now these, uh, Matthew 24, 7, nation will rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom, and in various places there will be famines and earthquakes. But all these are merely the beginning of birth pangs. Without one doubt, we are in the birth pangs. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, I want to talk to you a little bit because we've seen so much of uh, earthquakes. I mean, they're everywhere. That earthquake in Morocco, how many now is the death toll on that? Do you remember? 6,000? I can't remember. Uh, there is a, a storm named uh, what was Daniel in Libya, and already 20,000 people dead, 20,000 people missing that they really have not much hope of finding. So uh, these things are happening. They're all around. Just like he said, nation is against nation. I see in nation against nation, I see nations fighting each other, that their histories with Israel are absolutely horrid. And, it, and they're caught in a crossfire. And uh, you're always sad for the people, the innocents, you know. But uh, we see all these signs. And all of these signs tell us Jesus is coming. And he's coming soon. Bless the Lord. Glory to God. And you're going to see in this year, you're going to see coming up in this year, I believe, I'm almost certain that we might see. I'm certain that we might. Uh, Ezekiel 38 and 39. Uh, one morning you're liable to wake up, and it could be over by the time you hear about it, because it's, it's going to be a short thing. But uh, it's going to rock nations. It's going to be won by God, and nobody's going to get mixed up and think that any other, the United States Air Force or our IDF, they're not going to think that. They're going to go, God threw the hailstones. And they're going to say, it says in Ezekiel 38 and 39 that it's happening so that men will know Jehovah's God. Amen. Now, we've got right here, um, he used to be a wild Arab. He's still an Arab, but no longer wild. He got tamed. He got tamed by Jesus, calling his name. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. But you know that, in the, especially the Arabic world, I'm not sure of all the Islamic world, because there's a lot of the Islamic world that's not Arabic, Indonesia and places like that. But those Arabs, they're sons of Abraham. And they admire strength. The Lord said to us the other day, I want you to win, and we're going to win. And they're going to see, I believe this is going to happen, they're going to see God so defeat the enemies of Israel that they're going to say, Jehovah's God and not Allah. And I believe, you know that God loves the sons of Abraham? And I believe that by the millions are going to come in after that. I believe it. God loves them. 
God wants them. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Now, I don't think that God is just saying, I am going to hit Morocco with an earthquake. I'm going to hit you with an earthquake. I'm going to hit you with this and that. This earth is getting old. It's cracking up, the earth. We can go back to Genesis 1. If you go to Genesis 1, let's go there. Genesis 1, 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was without form and void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, let there be light, and there was light. Now, Genesis 1, 1 says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. He created them in the beginnings. Perfect. There's a gap between a length of time, possibly billions of years, between Genesis 1, 1 and Genesis 1, 2. Genesis 1, 2 says, and the earth was, or the earth became without form and void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, let there be light, and there was light. Now, if we were reading that in the Hebrew, it would say, and the earth became tohu va bohu. Now, I want you to see what those words mean, tohu va bohu. Tohu. So I made this little chart for you. Tohu. Formlessness, confusion, unreality, emptiness, chaos, waste. That's what tohu means. Bohu means emptiness. I think God put it in there to make it rhyme. A whole lot of the Bible rhymes if you read it, read it in Hebrew. So earth became tohu va bohu. A formless, confused, unreal, unreality, empty, chaotic wasteland. You think God made it like that? No. He can't make it like that. His work is perfect. Deuteronomy 32, 4. He is the rock. His work is perfect. God's work is glorious. Psalm 111, 3. His work is honorable and glorious. So in Genesis 1-1, when he made the earth, it was perfect. It was beautiful. It was, it, was, it was glorious. But something happened that brought it into that chaotic mess. And what was that? A place that's chaotic. Well, when God began to work over that, those waters, those dark, dank waters, and that chaos, it was inhabitable. Nobody could live in this earth. So if you want to study the body, Bible one, one time, well, the Bible interprets the Bible. So here's another place that we see tohu va bohu. And that is in Isaiah 45, 18. For thus said the Lord that created the heavens, God himself that formed the earth and made it, he has established it, he created it not in vain. And that word is tohu. That tells you I did not make it a chaotic wasteland. He formed it to be inhabited. When he made it in Genesis 1-1, it was habitable. It was habitable, and somebody lived there, and that somebody was one of the archangels, and that somebody's name was Lucifer, and Lucifer had a kingdom, and it was on this earth. Habitable. Bless the Lord. Earth was not created tohu, but it became tohu. How did it become tohu? Because Satan, who was on this earth, was the first one ever to turn his will against God. And he arose up. We know this. We could read it in the Ezekiel. We could read it in Isaiah. We're not going to take the time to do it. But there really was a Star Wars. He really attacked heaven because he wanted to put his throne above the thrones of God. We have all of his I wills there. He was the first one to turn his will against God. Here's what happened when he did it. If you have a good reference Bible right there by Genesis 1-1, it's going to tell you where tohu va bohu is used again. And it's going to take you to Jeremiah 4-23. That'll be in your little reference column in the middle because it's going to tell you that's where these words are used again. So Jeremiah 4-23. Jeremiah's a prophet, and God lets this prophet look back to the fall of Satan. 
I beheld the earth, and lo, it became tohu vabohu. That's when it happened. He let him see it. And here's what happened when Jeremiah was watching. I watched the heavens, and they had no light. Light left. What did God say when he came back? Let there be light. God is light. He's talking about himself. I beheld the mountains, and lo, they trembled, and all the hills moved lightly. Earth was shaken, the hills were shaken, the mountains were shaken, and rifts and breaks occurred under the earth. You think God made earth with a syro african rift or, a, or the Madrid rift or any other rifts and California rifts? And No, he didn't make it like that. But you know what's happened? Since the fall of Satan, everything deteriorated. And it's getting worse and worse and worse and worse and worse. And there are great earthquakes just as a result of Satan's fall and earth getting worse. And they're going to increase. They're going to increase in number. They're already in amazing numbers. Bless the Lord. But it's just another sign. He's another sign. Jesus is coming soon. I beheld, this is uh, verse 5, 25, and there was no man. No being was left. All the birds of the heavens were fled. I beheld and lo, the fruitful place was a wilderness, and all the cities, all of them, were broken down. They had cities in that ancient, at what broke them down? The presence of the Lord and his fierce anger. The presence of the Lord and his fierce anger is not a place you want to be unless you are right with God. For thus hath the Lord said, the whole earth or land shall be desolate, but I will not make a full end. So Satan did rebel against God, but what did Jesus say in Luke 10, 18? I beheld Satan as lightning fall from the sky, and then earth went into that state of dark damp, ugly, infested waters in all of God's creation through that little black spot back there until the day the Holy Spirit started hovering. God was up to something. He's going to bring back earth. He's going to bring back everything. Everything he ever created, he's going to bring it to perfection. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Now, Here's what's happening. And we're told about it. God told us everything. We don't need to worry about ozone, climate change. My friend, uh, I have a friend, and she said she ran into this little, uh, well, I have lots of friends, but this one happened to live out in the crazy land. And uh, this little girl came, and she was absolutely a 14, 15-year-old little girl, so distraught that she, was, she had nervous problems had to see a psychiatrist because she's so worried about earth and what we're doing to earth. Climate change. Yeah, there is probably climate change. Lots of changes. All kind of changes are happening. There's holes in the ozone layer. God told us they're going to be holes in the ozone layer. Right here. Right here he told us. Right here in Hebrews chapter 1 verse 10. And thou, Lord, in the beginning hast laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the work of thine hands. They shall all perish. The heavens. Talking about the atmospheric heavens. Talking about why you can live here on planet earth and breathe. They shall perish, but thou remainest. They shall all wax old as doth a garment. What does a garment do? In old time and days, it got the holes in it. Nowadays, they make Stuff that lasts forever, you're mad you had to wear it so many years. <laughs> still doesn't look good. You still, you know, you're shut. You don't like it, but it's no holes in it and it looks good. <laughs> but in the olden times, it got holes. And as a vesture shalt thou fold them up, and they shall all be, what? Changed. But thou art the same, and thy years shall not fail. Here it is in Lynn translation of the Bible, the Amplified. And further, you, Lord, did lay the foundation of the earth in the beginning, and the heavens are the works of your hands. They will perish, these atmospheric heavens. But you remain and continue permanently. 
They will all grow old and wear out like a garment, like a mantle thrown about oneself. You will roll them up, and they will be changed and replaced by others. But you remain the same, and your years will never end nor come to failure. So you can just go on using pampers, and you can spray your hair, and you can do all of this. You are not the problem. Earth is very old and creaky, and he's going to change it. This is called um, the earth that now is, the world that now is. The Bible speaks of the world that then was, the world that now is, and the world that is to come. There are going to be some changes made, folks. And the, what the Lord said to us is going to come rapidly now. Second Peter. Oh, I love Second Peter. It's all prophetic. Second Peter 3.3. 3. Knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers walking after their own lusts. And saying, where is the promise of his coming? Since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. This they're willingly ignorant of. See, they're willing, they're ignorant of it. Things have changed. By, that by the word of God, the heavens were of old and the earth standing out of the water and in the water, whereby the world that then was being overflowed with water perished. The world didn't perish in Noah's flood. It was still there. The little dove flew out and got a little twig. Still there. Oh, no. This is that first Adamic civilization. It's called the world that then was. And God let the waters, the deep, dark waters overflow it. That's the world that then was. It perished. But, verse 7, the heavens and the earth which are now. That's when you and I live. By the same word are kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. But, beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing. One day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years is a day. If we had time to teach this, we'd take you to the book of Hosea and show you when Jesus is coming. But we don't have time. But praise the Lord. He's been gone two days now. Hallelujah. Down in the 13th verse. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for... Dun, 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 new heavens and a new earth, wherein dwelleth righteousness. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that we look for such things, be diligently that you be found of him in peace without spot and blameless. Yes, the world is growing old. It's wearing out. Weather conditions have deteriorated since the fall. They were perfect when God made earth. But then when the curse came, and then the curse when Adam fell, the weather changed. Wicked men and seducers are waxing worse and worse. The darkness is getting grosser and grosser. But, oh, glory, the light and the glory is to shine upon you. You became a brand new creature. He tells us all this is going to happen, and he tells us what to do. You want to know what to do? Read the epistles especially the last chapters of the epistles. After, in Thessalonians, after Paul tells you, now this is going to happen, Antichrist, da, 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 da. now he says, rejoice evermore, pray without ceasing, quench not the spirit. That's what you do. You do what the word said to do. And you do not forsake the assembling of yourselves together. You flock together. And you say, God, Speak to us. I had a vision. I'm not going to share all about that vision, but it was so real. And he showed me how we have never seen the fivefold ministry operate the way they were designed. We've never seen the nine gifts of the Spirit operate the way they were designed. We've seen them operate for our earth walk. But he showed me the glory of peril. And he showed me that, that gifts... Gifts in men. I saw them in packages. I saw them unwrapped by prayers. Like the word of knowledge is going to operate like never before. And Brother Hagin said, 
Every pastor should have the word of knowledge. Mm -hmm. And if he doesn't, he should ask God for it. Mm -hmm. Why I'm telling you it's going to be that the pastors will go to church. They're going to look out there at you. And they're going to know whatever God shows them about you. It'll be good. It'll be wonderful. Then he'll give them words of knowledge, and they'll know what's going to happen next week. Now, folks, next week, such and such is going to happen. Word of wisdom. Tongues and interpretation. Gifts of healings and miracles. Because the Holy Ghost is building a temple for the Lord. A house for his manifestation. We're going to manifest him. We're going to change from glory to glory to glory to glory until we are just like Jesus. Change. Darkness darker, but the light lighter. Hallelujah. I'm so excited. I'm so tickled. I'm so happy. Am I afraid? Are you kidding me? No. Dear God, no. I wouldn't care. The devil walked down this street path right here. I could handle him. I can. I can. I know who I am. I'm not some little beggar outside the door praying for some kind of a a slopped over blessing. I know that I'm seated at the right hand of Jesus Christ. And that if I tell the devil where to go, he is going there. And he is not bothering my children. I want to tell you something about the devil and me. I know about authority. I learned about it from a champion. Kenneth E. Hagin. Lots of years ago. And I sit in my seat every day. It's not something you agree with your head. You read those prayers and Ephesians and you sit in that seat and you tell that devil, no, you don't. You're not touching my four children, their mates, my ten grandchildren, their mates, my nine grand, great-grandchildren. You're not touching them. I plead the blood of Jesus over them. I plead the blood of Jesus over them today. And in my heavenlies where I've got realmed them, I call you into a state of paralyzation. Oh, I think you should be afraid to say that. I'm not a bit afraid. Because you know why? I believe God's word works. And I'm going to live like I can work it. I'm not going to run around there in bed with the devil half the time. I'm not going to be gossiping. I'm not going to be walking outside of love. I'm not going to do it. But you know what? Here's the thing about it. I want to get over to you right now. He knows who will blink. If you're going to blink, well, I tried that. I did it a few times. You did nothing. Nothing. He knows if you'll blink. You've got it. You've got the authority. He is under your feet. Watch what you sing. Watch the words. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Don't blink. Start doing it. Build yourself up in that word and do not blink. We're down to the, we're down to the, we down. You know what good soldiers like? They like to get in the battle. It's already been won. We just hold the ground. I'm not letting him touch our ministry. Every single day, the blood goes over it. The blood. The blood. He can't cross the blood. I put the blood on me. I put the blood on Shelly. I put the blood on Brenda. I put the blood on Tony. And they do too. They know to do it. You shall see change. But do not fear. Know that all the authority and power that has been given to you shall be increased exponentially this upcoming year. 
<laughs> Did I not say the glory is increased day by day? And Satan sees you as stars shining bright. Hallelujah. You shall shine and show as never before. The body of Christ shall rise. Rise. Rise to new levels. Ha, ha, ha. I shall increase your knowledge of how to use the keys of the kingdom. Ha, 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 ha. You're equipped. You're lacking nothing. Everything is provided. Everything. All sufficiency. Sing about the all sufficiency. Sing about the place where you sit. Sing about your authority and power. Live it. Live it. Live it. Now, miracles. Ah, you've seen many miracles. You've seen the miracle of Israel. You've seen many miracles that you don't even recognize, but you've also in this church seen some miracles. You've seen some miracles. But you have seen nothing yet. Nothing. Nothing. Give yourselves unto prayer. Give yourselves unto each other. And give yourselves to the Lord. Walk and move in one accord. Recognize that it is in the end of days in which you live and that I've given you much so that you have much to give. For men and women in darkness will despair and things will happen and even the enemy will try to get you to take on the care, but do not do it. Let, your, let not your heart be troubled. Rejoice in me and say, Here I am, Lord, fill me so that men can see God in me. And they'll come to you, and with your very own hands, you'll stretch them out like Jesus did. And they'll be healed across the land. Ah, oh, you'll be glad it's the day of change. You'll be glad things are being rearranged. For I'm a covenant-keeping God, and my covenant will not break. Hallelujah. It belongs unto you. And it's for your sake. So go with me. Close, close, close. Close, close, close. As close as you can be. I'm in you. And you're in me. That's close, you see. That's close. Praise your name. Praise your name. Praise your name, praise your name, praise your name. Everybody stand. And just praise the Lord. And say, Lord, here I am. At your command. I will go where you tell me to go. I will say what you tell me to say. I will be what you want me to be from this very day. Your Holy Spirit, I will hear. He will have my inner ear. Increase the volume and dig out my ear. For Father, I do declare I shall hear better, and I shall understand your will for me and your will for the land. I will look at the light and not so much at the night. I expect all your word has promised. I expect it, Lord. And I will walk in one accord as your holy written will reveals. 
Hallelujah. Praise your name. Let's just pray a minute in the spirit. Kofrande hishato. Lo bravi danya ni kwa. Le do do jede brando lo gobre vreda la daya. Le tonye ni maya. Kavri di shunanye no kobra kavala tore mali tanyo no kapra. Sopra Nico, my God. Sopra Nico, my God. Oh, Father. Oh, Father. Ma quella di avere bagnone e quella di avere tasche. Hallelujah. Praise your name. Oh, who la vara di shanduruku, who la cabra balatene, you know, compra catania, ne covula catata. E shana more di fra caladaia, no covula cabra calacaia, no covula bacce. E shana no nombri calacabra delle donne, ne covula caia, ne cavalata. Goge de bella bassana la cola, madada cotto de godo recet. Just take that microphone, Lynn, and just lead us in prayer a little bit before we close. Oh, Jesus. I, I'm, I'm praying about this assembling. Yeah. Now, I'm telling you, we got to do it. We have to. I mean, this is becoming a holy mandate. It's not, oh, well, I, I think I might go. No, I might not go. No, I might go. It's not that anymore. Not anymore. All of us are needed. It, it, it's like, it would be like my thumb needing a hand. And Absolutely. if the thumb is not on the hand, there's, it's not going to work. And so with every, wherever, oh my God. See, in the most I say, we come on a death day. Lord, so you still do both. I believe me that the night is those. And this all started back with Brother Copeland. And he was talking about the gifts of the spirit and about the body and about the assembly. Do you remember that? Do you remember it all? That's what he was talking about that night, about the assembling together. If you have a jigsaw puzzle, you can put that puzzle in that box, and you can shake it up, but it's not assembled. You've got every one of those pieces, and every one of those pieces have to moshai, they have to connect they have to connect together, and it is God Almighty that does it, that connects it all together. And a mastoya da si, and a candido boste vosoba, and a God is going to deal with every person. Every person is going to be dealt with severely, dealt with about the assembling. 
So let's everybody pray together. I your conde shagonde gando mo sesjo and 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 bosha daria sa sestil go ba manutova and another go da beri tosa we we have to go there to get a message we we've got to go to get the message it's not about that anymore it's not about going to get a message. It's about the body of Christ coming together. And when they all come together, they all start to rise. It starts to rise. It starts to rise. And miracles and signs and wonders, and you have prayed for miracles and signs and wonders, and those miracles and signs and wonders, they have to all connect together. And everybody's going to know if you're missing. In contact, a show to come. Eh, to do you mind you to stamina? Okay, okay, okay. Okay, let's everybody pray. Everybody, remember their pie. Okay, let's everybody pray. Everybody, remember their pie. Okay, let's everybody pray. Everybody, remember their pie. Okay, opportunities. Opportunities. Okay, let's everybody pray. Everybody, remember their pie. Stop praying for the rising. Pray for the assembly. And the arising will happen when the assembly comes. And you to be here, coach, then in the motor. I said to the bota. Ah, Zoha. And just the mastoba in coma. And talk to the king to mistoba at Subia. Yes, Lord. I saw no more tabashto. And the things we'll know, the things we'll know, because we're all together assembled, the things we'll all know. It's That's in the right. knowing. We'll all know. That's where we'll the all know. Of the he wants will us, be. right? Mm -hmm. He wants us all together mm -hmm. to get it together. Mm -hmm. Not this one over here and this one here and this one calls this one and this one calls this one. No, no, everyone gets it and we're all together. It's the body rising. Hallelujah. Oh, and God can do things in the assembly that he cannot do. The Holy Spirit can do things in the temple assembled that he cannot do uh, in the temples just apart from each other. And so it's in that assembling of the temple that he builds us to a house, like it says in Ephesians, of his habitation. And it's there you're going to see the operation of these gifts, the way God designed them to operate. And it's there you're going to go like it's an intelligence meeting. Oh, yes. And there you're going to get intelligence from on high. Knowing. Knowing. And you will know, <laughs> we will know full well. And the enemies that he's come here. against the, 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 the assemblies of the church. Yes. He did it with COVID. And, and yes. here's a little news for you he's not done trying it. Yes. But we're going to assemble anyway. <laughs> Bless the Lord. We are assembling. And some of you who are out there and uh, you, you, you need to assemble in this church, maybe you did before, come tomorrow morning. Say, and start right tomorrow morning. Here I come. Come Don't here. say, I can't, I can't do it. Don't say, I can't do it. God gives his strength unto strength unto strength. God gives you the strength to do it. All the strength. Do you know the Lord, uh, there was someone that they came faithfully to our church. Oh, our church is just growing by leaps and bounds. We chipped there were in our second building program. But they said the Lord told them not to go to church anymore. That's not, that's not God. He, he did not tell you not to go to church anymore. So just put your pajamas off and get your duds on and go to church. 
All right. Amen. Uh, are you are you done? I'm done. I think I'm done. I think we're done. Let's give okay. it to Pastor Matt. Okay. Pastor Matt. One thing that uh, I felt like the Lord was saying to me a moment ago, you know, we think of security in numbers. And this is one of the reasons that he's telling us not to forsake the assembly of ourselves together. Because there'll be security requirements that make it uh, desirable for us to be part of a larger body. But it's not just natural protection, natural security, it's spiritual security. The numbers are important for us to come together in a sufficient uh, strength that, uh, you know, spiritually, there are not going to be any stragglers, any left behind ones. There are not going to be any um, inroads made by the enemy when we're together like there would be if we were alone. It is something that's been so big in me lately, and of course I talk about it probably more, more than, you know, uh, sometimes I think I should, but it is so important that we not forsake the assembly of ourselves together. Yeah. COVID, COVID set a bad, um, a bad view of life in motion when people started getting a taste of, well, you know, I can stream it. I can stay at home. I can be a little more rested and more comfortable. And it is a fact that over 300,000 churches closed their doors in the first two years after COVID. And uh, it's because people got used to not going. And you know, when we came back, um, I've shared this before, I'll share it again. But we had, you know, mm, between four and 5,000 a Sunday when, before COVID. After COVID, the first time we came back together, we had less than 1,000. And then slowly we have built back oh, since COVID to about 2,000. Well, last week we had 2,400. So we're about half where we were. And of course, uh, you know, some people say, well, look at the numbers. Streaming numbers are up. Yeah, they're, they're way up. But the income didn't come with the streaming numbers. The income usually comes from those who are in attendance. And so we can see why churches went under and why others are struggling even now. The only people that I know that are not struggling are parachurch ministries. People who have a large donor base beyond the local congregation. They are on TV. They uh, travel a lot. Uh, but churches are what the enemy targeted during COVID. And it, it's time for it to end. Amen. It's just flat time for it to end. And so what does it say when God says, forsake not the assembly of yourselves together? So much the more as you see the day approaching. And it is clearly approaching. Let's stand. I just want us to pray a prayer of salvation together, and I realize that most people here are saved, uh, but I have uh, a desire to pray the prayer of salvation together and be sure that anyone who is not certain that heaven would be your home if your life were required of you right now, then this isn't the day to be casual in your approach to God. So let's say this prayer together. God in heaven, God in heaven. I, come to you in the name of Jesus. I come to you in the name of Jesus. I've decided to believe, decided to believe. that Jesus is, your son, Jesus is your son, that he died for me, died for me. and rose again from the dead, the dead. that I might have eternal life in the blessing of life. Jesus, come into my heart. Be my Savior, be my, Savior. Be, my be my Lord. By the power of the Holy Spirit, the of the Holy Spirit. I'll live my life for you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.
Give the Lord a shout. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you said that prayer for the first time, come up when we dismiss. We'd love to be the church in your life. Uh, Billy, you got some? Yeah, I There's an... uh, I, I got this while going, didn't want to give it. But this was the day that uh, they decided each year, it was decided when they were in the wilderness, on this day, who was going to live the next year. You remember that God said that uh, any man 20 years old and older is going to die in the wilderness, not going to go in the promised land. Well, while I was preaching, the Lord showed me there's somebody in here. I don't know who you are. I don't know if you're a Christian and you just kind of backslidden or what. But um, if you don't straighten out, you're not going to be here long. And I, I, don't, I don't like to say things like this. But if you do, and if you do straighten out, um, you, you live. I don't know who you are, but I know there's someone here. And I didn't want to give it. It was a while ago, and I thought, I'm not going to say that. But... If you want to, you could come down here now. We pray for you. Everything get right with God. Yeah. You know, he needs some brave soldiers. Just say, hey, it's me. I'm coming down that path. I'm going to get right with God. So everybody bow your head. We're going to wait a minute. You, you know this is you. I mean, you don't have to wonder. Don't wait until after the service. Don't be thinking, well, I'll wait and I'll go up after everybody's been dismissed. This is now. This is before God. It's really serious in your life. I think, I think some of these things are hidden, uh, but you know they're there. It's, it's kind of a, like a, I don't know, it's hidden. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. You have someone to pray with her? Our sister's not the only one. No, no, there's a man. There's a man. There's a man in here. He needs to come. You know, we just kind of, we just kind of swept things under the rug because he is a God of love. But oh my, life's so much better. You get things right. There's a man. There's a young woman that's come, been brave enough to come. Surely you are, man, you brave enough. I can tell you life is going to change for you, but it's going to get, it's getting changed for you one way or the other. Right now, you're going to go further into darkness or you're going to go further into light and blessing. It's your choice now, tonight. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Anyone else? Anyone else? Why don't you three come together right here, please? Father, I thank you for the power of the blood of Jesus to cleanse, to restore, to renew, and to make whole. And I thank you for the hearts of these three men that have come forward and woman 
We believe, Lord, that you have, you have things working in them right now that will change the direction of their life for the balance of their life. We thank you, Father, for freedom, for freedom and liberty from that thing that has held you from the Lord. Freedom and liberty, we thank you, Lord. This thing can't stay any longer. It has to go. You've said that you enable us, Lord. Well, they have come forward. We thank you for that enablement by the power of the Holy Spirit. Tonight, we believe change is being wrought on the inside of each of my brothers. We thank you for it. We thank you for it, Lord God, and declare the captives free. Say that with me. The captives are free. The captives are free, 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 free. In Jesus' mighty name, we give you the praise, Lord. We give you the praise and the glory for this. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Give the Lord a Give the Lord a praise now. Amen. 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 Glory to God. Glory to God. I'd like you all to minister to them, make sure there's no need that isn't being addressed naturally. So uh, if you would, please, Falou, just follow Falou if you would. And sister, you want to go with them or you want to stay here? Um, Falou is going to extend some additional ministry if needed be. So if you would go with him. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Billy. I mean, uh, you know, this isn't about playing church anymore. This is, this, is, this is about some serious things that we're facing, not just as a nation, but humanity in general. So thank you for being here tonight. And, you know, you just might want to come back and hear a little more tomorrow, you know, get a little more of the... The Holy Ghost and fire tomorrow. I want to thank all of you for being here. Father, I thank you for your blessing upon each person in this sanctuary. I plead the blood of Jesus over every one here under the sound of my voice in our online congregation as well. I plead the blood and declare that no weapon fashioned of the enemy against them or us, your body, can or will prosper. And we give you the praise for it in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you guys. We'll see you.